Let's hear it for the boy. Well, not if you are loser dick Andrew Tate. And according to the Barbie movie, not if you are anybody who has anything to do with the patriarchy. So weighing in today on this big, hot mess of masculinity is a returning guest and a friend of mine, Connor Moore, who hosts Connor Wanders. You may know him formerly politically homeless and let me just paint the picture for you now I don't know Connor we haven't hung out personally but from what I can see this is a stand-up guy this is a real you know kind of standard of what a man should be in my mind he's a husband who is obsessed with his wife they are business partners partners in crime he's a new dad and Connor's not afraid to get vulnerable. He had a, a dad moment this morning, but also even as we are hopping on here, right? He is an, an enthusiast for things like fitness, hunting, golf, guns. So a man in a nutshell. So perfect person to weigh in on all this. And yes, we are going to get to the Andrew Tates of it all and his, his, minions who are having meltdowns over what I have to say on the internet, like cry me a river, you little baby bitches. Um, Connor, welcome to cancel me. Baby will welcome back. I should say. So is your ego feeling good? Do you feel like, you know, I am a pretty good guy. I'm a pretty good, you know, cause let's be real and we'll get into this, but everyone has their say of what a man should be. Right. Oh, everybody has an opinion about what a man should be. It's and it's it's so funny. I feel fine. Like I don't feel He's like, like I'm chilling. I'm good. You know? When you like list it off, it's like yeah, like I'm a dad. I'm a husband. I'm a dad before anything else. I hunt. I play golf. I drive a truck. I like manual labor. I grew up doing manual labor. I grew up in a small town. Like the Jason Aldean song, like isn't far from reality. I like to say that I grew up in like varsity blues is like a satirical version of what I grew up in. Like Even very, your voice, like guys, this is again like a vulnerable <laughs> guy, emotionally intelligent, but you're not a pussy. Okay, look at you have a no, lift for your die. You have tattoos. You're ripped. Like you got. Yeah, you got it. Thing too, it's like I think the aesthetics of it are one thing. Um, <laughs> I've, got, I've got a robust mustache, but it's like you know I think <laughs> I've also had my ass kicked before. I've I've kicked a few asses before. It's like it's just I've, you know I, was, I, I grew up in a place where it was kind of a fuck around and find out. And if you ran your mouth, you might get, you might catch a fist. And then if somebody else ran their mouth, you were kind of entitled to do the same thing. It's a, I mean, I worked oil and gas construction since I was like 12, you know, I kind of actually missed that life as funny as it was like swinging hammers and, and running wrenches and breaking out flow line and pumping oil wells and all that kind of stuff. It's like, rubbing dirt on it. I love that. I love a guy who can get dirt under his fingernails. Like I love a guy who can get it down a philosophical intellectual conversation with me about existentialism and then hop on his tractor and rub some dirt on it. Like, I've, never, I've never driven a, an actual tractor. I've been oh. on a tractor. I've never driven one, but I've ridden horses and uh, yeah, you know, you can rubbing dirt on stuff does stop the bleeding, by the way. <laughs> Tried and true. And, uh, drink, though. Yeah. I've done it before with, uh, with charcoal dirt whenever I killed my elk last year. Cause our hands, you, when you're out in the woods all the time, your hands are just going to bleed. Like they're just like, you're going to, your hands are just, gonna like you're gonna bump into stuff and it's like <laughs> i'm like bleeding out of my hand and i gotta clean this elk and i was like God, i gotta just, I'd throw some dirt on it <laughs> I, didn't, so, I, didn't really have to, I was so bloody that i didn't have time to like i didn't want to get my first aid kit all dirty so i was like just put some ash ash on it it'll be fine it's activated charcoal it'll be good <laughs> no right i hope you guys are taking notes so as my viewers know i mean this is a topic that i've been passionate about and i've been talking about for years i mean i talked with celebrities about it when it's, it was like taboo on the red carpet right because we'll get into this but like Hollywood's whole idea of, in my opinion, softening and feminizing men because they go so hard on like, don't be toxic, don't be toxic. And I've gotten input from everyone from Leah Thompson, right? Iconic, Back to the Future, to, um, you know, Milo Ventimiglia in of This Is Us and Gilmore Girls and just hearing their, you know, input. And in Leah's case, she was like, you know, I don't mind, I don't need my, because I'm the kind of person who's like, look, I'm a tough bitch. I'm self-sufficient, but like, acts of service, like fix the toilet, fix the light fixture. Right. And she was like, I don't need my husband to do that. He'll do other stuff. He'll cook, he'll whatever. And then you have the Milo Ventimiglias who are like, you know, tried and true. What's a man like be kind, be, you know, a stand up guy. Right. So in your opinion, what are just some things that when everyone's battling it out, like what just makes a good guy? 
You know, I think there's a lot of things that go into like, and it's not a, it's not a one size fits all thing. I think it's of course. Really weird. You have like these kind of new agey like divine masculine types who are generally just like trying to articulate their own pussiness in a way that makes them feel better, and then you have like the art of man type cats who are like antiquated like trucks and guns make you a man type of thing and it's it's really weird it's like the the most popular people are on the extremes which is very common so true. In, in so many areas right it's like and there's this huge blind spot of like it's a very nuanced thing you know i think that there are certain masculine traits like assertiveness is one uh goal like men generally need something to move towards like a purpose Definitely. Uh, this, this one kind of like very very um existential spiritual cat named david data talked about and actually it's actually a really decent metaphor i thought that masculinity is kind of like the ship and femininity is kind of like the ocean right like ships have a purpose they carry things they move they do a thing but they can also be swallowed up by the ocean if they if they fucking don't play their cards right you know what i mean and it's like, <laughs> it's like, this thing, like the ocean can be tranquil and still or like a a treacherous bitch you know what i mean and that's and they can't stay afloat right without us and that's the there's a there's a dance there and i think yeah definitely the loudest on the thing like an andrew tate like i don't think you know i drive a ford raptor right i drive a douchebag car i very much do it's like our family car <laughs> yeah, i very it. much own it <laughs> yeah it is what it is and I, I even got i was gonna get like a an orange one and i'm like that's too much dude you gotta just get i end up getting the uh avalanche gray that's kind of muted so it doesn't look like too loud but it's our family car right i got a car seat in the back like it's it's the one we drive uh on road trips and stuff like that and I take hunting and all these kind of things. And, and, but I don't think that like Ferraris and as a guy who's slept with a lot of girls, like I don't think Ferraris and fucking bitches like makes you a man either. And I think that's where someone like Andrew Tate kind of misses the mark. But then again, I don't think that the way that Ben Shapiro goes about it either are these two guys to me, I'm like, I don't really know if you're a, a, a picture of masculinity that people can really look into because Ben Shapiro and Andrew Tate, are more similar than they are different in the way they look at this kind of thing, right? Like they're both chess. They're kids that played a lot of chess. You see what I'm saying? Like, that's not, that's generally not going to lead to like, they're smart, they're intelligent, they're articulate and they have masculine traits. But I think that they're kind of leveraging their position in order to kind of um, push an agenda that maybe doesn't empathize. And I think that one of the skills that men, not to soften men, but like sometimes it can be helpful to like learn empathy and learn how to connect with people while also being assertive and goal oriented and having, you know, passions that drive you. I think those are really important things uh, and stability and groundedness. Those are all really important parts of a man. And I think that because, and this is where the media and kind of pop culture gets into it because it's been so belittled and kind of like mm -hmm. neutralized that a lot of men are aimless. And we're seeing that like yeah. there's a big, like suicide addiction, yep. porn addiction, yep. video games, Ma over masturbating <laughs> like only not fans, not like, you know not pursuing higher education not being in the workforce not being in the military you know I mean, all of these not happen. having sex right all these things with, with higher education I feel like that even doesn't that that i think the higher education piece and that push for higher education actually did men a disservice i think there's a lot of men that don't have access to upward mobility because they end up in these white collar jobs and really the best way to get to six figures is to become a mechanic or a plumber. Like these are really, and I look at this now, I'm like, those are jobs that chat GPT can't take away. Right. Like I know yeah, God, thank God for that. Through. Yeah. Right. And those are the world go around like blue collar dudes have been villain, like from every angle. Right. And you can't say that even conservatives really so true. They play lip service to it, but they don't really do anything to stand up for these people where I think when people talk about like free college education and free this, I'm like, how about we start out with free trade schools? So people that are coming from poverty have an, a, a pathway to being contributing members of society and earning good livings and probably creating a business, right? You go to a trade school and you learn how to be a mechanic. Well, then maybe you go work for Ford for a couple of years, five, 10 years, then you open your own business. Maybe you want right. to work, you do a, maybe you want to open a motorcycle mechanic business, but boom, then you've got a business. Then you've got an asset. You have something your kids can do. Like I learned how to work in the oil field because my grandfather owned some oil field production because he, as a poor 16 year old kid started working on an oil rig and just worked his sure. ass off seven days a week for 40 years, you know, and just, and if it, he couldn't, he could not spell worth the shit, but he knew what was going on down in an oil well. Like he was a savant with that shit. Right. And, it was and, really beautiful. I, and I think there's something really to be said. You hit this is men 
just feeling kind of aimless right now, even small things, this may sound dumb, but like, can you change a tire? Like all of these things, right? And I feel like in so many ways they're enabled and they're babied and they don't show up, whether it be for themselves and they're what you're talking about, this kind of thing, even like chivalry or, or for women or for people around them, right? And I feel like you really struck me, and I've said this too, with something that someone like a Ben Shapiro and an Andrew Tate, oddly enough, have in common is this sort of inflated, um, hyperbolic idea of what masculinity should be. And that's what's so wild to me is you're right. They do have more in common than not. And I've seen you be critical of these sort of Daily Wire, cheesy, you know, programs that are like, what men should be. And it's like this, you know, tractor driving, chest pounding, like, I am men, me strong, right? And yeah. then you have the other side of that, though, that's very problematic is an Andrew Tate. And Andrew Tate, in my mind, I don't just go after Andrew Tate because it's like the thing to do. I have done my deep dives. I've watched thoroughly. I Because his, his haters will be like, you take it out of context. Like, first of all, I'm the first person to call people out for taking shit out of context, right? In the media. You don't have to take this. them out of context, really. You don't have. You, watching a, a video of Andrew Tate for 30 seconds talking literally about abusing a woman, slapping her around, grabbing her by the neck, and then she'll want to get wet and you fuck her. It doesn't really... It's not, that's not hard to put two and two together. times and that can be true, but that's, that's, that's consensual. That's different. You know I mean? No, he, he, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm all for, it. yeah. speaking of men and women and, and the yin and the yang, and this is like another kind of sidebar, but I am all for powerful women being, you know, in real life, like again, boss bitch, and then being the submissive and like the power in that, like, yes, this is not that. Like, let me just be clear, like Andrew Tate, this is not that. There's literally videos of him, like borderline abuse, like, right. And, and my point is every single thing that he says reeks is, is ridden with degrading and belittling women. Like, genuinely thinking that men are superior, that women are um, inferior. And it is so toxic and it is so disgusting to me. And I always say, it's like, okay, you have to like validate your, your manlyhood and your masculinity by making women smaller than you. It's like, you're not cool. You are a baby bitch loser. But this, the interesting thing to me is like, right. How both of these entities or these voices, if you will, again, have such extreme versions of this. And I call out the Ben Shapiro's in the right too, because a lot of people on the right are the ones to worship Andrew Tate. And Andrew Tate, again, to your point is all about like Ferraris and literally making women currency and your bitches and all this, like having no respect, like what self-respecting man ever. But these are the same, like the Ben Shapiro worshipers who are all about tradition and family and, and a good upstanding man and nuclear family and all this shit are the same people jerking off to this guy. So what? It's, it's weird. The crossover is really strange. And even like Matt Walsh, like to me, Matt Walsh is like, He's smart, but he's kind of a bitch. He's kind of a pussy, right? It's like, he, that just is, like, he always had, if you look at him without a beard, you can see it. Like, he's a chin. <laughs> and it's like, which is fine. Do your thing. Like, I don't, it's not, this isn't about hate. This is just like, hey, this is, I don't look at that guy and be like, that guy models masculinity for me. It just doesn't, it doesn't seem like he, like he has soft hands. Like, I don't really, I actually have a hard time with soft men. Like they really make me kind of uncomfortable, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Like men with soft hands, like guys that give me, like, like advice on masculinity and can't change a tire. Like, like that's just weird to me. But then again, the guys that are doing that, that are out there living that life aren't on social media seeking praise, right? <laughs> They're just doing the thing. Yeah. That's so Going true. The thing. Like even the guys that I follow that's that so like true. Elk hunters and backcountry hunters that have families and do this thing. Those are guys that I, that, that model masculinity for me. Like Remy Warren is a good example. This guy has been driven since he was a young man. He's been an elk guide and a hunting guide forever. He's got uh, a daughter with a kid on the way. He, he taught his wife how to hunt. He doesn't talk about masculinity at all. But I look at that guy and I'm like, that guy models kind of the way that I want to show up for my family. And it's not because he talks about that he's modeling that for anybody. He's just living his life and putting it out there. So true. For people to be able to pursue things that they enjoy. And that to me, I'm like, that's, that's somebody that I can look in, look up to in this regard, because it's, it's, it's something that I, we connect on a passion and I love the way that he kind of carries himself and articulates himself, but it's not because he's like 
telling me how to be a man. He's just, he's just tapping into something that I enjoy. And I think men could be, would be better served finding that, like finding something you're passionate about and looking for people who are kind of modeling and living through their passions in a similar way and mirroring that versus somebody who's telling you how to live. Because the thing about Andrew Tate and Ben for, you know, to an extent is that their kind of analysis of what's wrong is correct. Like they're right about a lot of things. Their prescription for what to do about it, I feel like is a little bit biased and misguided, especially with Andrew. With Ben, I think he just, he thinks that he did it the right way. But for me, I can say that I got a lot out of having casual sex and having, you know, a lot of dating a lot and having relationships into my thirties and just kind of figuring out what I liked because I didn't ever have that. You know, I, I didn't have that as a, as a young man, but then when I go back to my hometown of 9,000 people in Texas, in Graham, Texas, little oil and cattle town is pretty affluent for, for these small towns. I looked at it. And I'm like, man, you know, that's not my, that's not the life for me, but I respect it where I used to resent it. And I'm like, I get that. This is like, there's something simple, like beauty. And there's some beauty in the simplicity of this life. And I think that gets overlooked by a lot of people because the urban opinion makers tend to overlook that because they've never lived it. But being somebody right. who's done both, I've lived in LA, I've lived in Graham, Texas, I've, you know, I've done these things. And I can say like, yeah, I, I can see the, 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 the good and the bad in both of them. But I think that there's so little connection with that because the people that are having these conversations, have this dialogue, haven't had the diversity of experience to really tap into it. They can, but they can, they're smart enough and, and objective enough that they can have a good analysis of the issues that are at hand. But they don't really, they don't empathize in a way that connects with people. And then when yeah. you have like Andrew Tate, he's playing off of victimhood. Like these guys, they feel like they've been oppressed or they've been villainized and they're not really that wrong, right? Now, do I think it's the role of a of a man to like constantly bitch about that? No, I think you do something about it, right? I think, and then, you know, I look at somebody like Jordan Peterson who'd really tapped into a lot of, who I really have a lot of respect for Jordan Peterson, but he's been attacked so much unjustly that he just kind of turned into a bitter old man. And that's sad to me because mm -hmm. my dad, I mean, my, I, I, my grandparents raised me. My dad was in prison for about six years and Jordan, like 12 rules for life really helped him, like really helped him. And those guys, he had to wait a couple months to even get that book. Cause there's only one, how odd is this? There's only one copy of that book in the prison, right? Those guys can't listen mm -hmm. to podcasts. There's like one copy of each book. Right. They gotta wait. That's that book so should be everywhere in there. There should be 30 copies of that thing floating around. They should be able to listen to like something like Joe Rogan, because these guys have these conversations that might, you know, get them back. Like, hey man, like stand up straight, do good for your family. Like that kind of shit is what guys in prison need. In my opinion, yeah. my dad took those six years and says like, I'm fucking done with this shit. I'm going to add wow. six twelve years of my life with my time in here. And I'm really proud of him for it. So I have like a personal connection with that. Wow. But now you know, watching the world kind of gone crazy on both sides, watching Peterson kind of turn into like a bitter old man, kind of, it kind of hurts because I'm like, man, fuck, you just should have like stayed fucking true to the path. You were doing the right thing and it was going to be like these, these attacks on you were unjustified. You were right. Mm -hmm. And instead you turned into what they wanted you to be. And that bothers the shit out of me. It's I'm like, so they, interesting. Won. they won, they beat you. Yeah, it's so interesting. And and when I did my episode on this and the reason why we keep bringing up for those of you guys listening, like if you've been living on the Ocean Gate sub, the reason we're talking about Andrew Tate so much is because he did an, a two and a half hour sit down with Tucker Carlson that it literally got, you know, almost 100 million views in two days. So what does uh, that say? I did a whole episode. I watched it on a, on a third party, like somebody ripped it off and put it on YouTube and had 14 million views. Oh, really? On a different, well, like on YouTube. Well, we're going to get to why this is resonating, um, unfortunately, with so many men. But similarly to what you're saying, you know, because I've been talking about this for years, I say in my episode about this, it's like, I hate to say I told you so. I could have predicted this because men have been shit on and ridiculed and belittled for years. So what happens? And Andrew Tate comes along and he's the Messiah, right? So I advocate for strong role models of what men should be someone like you right to to be louder and to you know it's like be a david beckham be a ryan reynolds these guys aren't pussies and yet they don't need to they're they're worshiping their women right so i love also what you said about the everyman i think about you know who aren't the loudest in the room who aren't the ben shapiro's aren't the andrew tates i think about my own dad and yeah. both of my grandpas, right? Again, the the quiet every man in day to day society, but who are good men who show up for themselves, who have honor, who show up for their families, for their women. 
you know, that's what I think it really, it, it really takes. And, you know, something about both of these guys and you, I love what you said about talking about like experimenting with women and learning as a man and how it helped you grow in that journey is, you know, what does it say again, to bring the parallel with the Ben Shapiro and the Andrew Tate, something else that they have in common is their willingness to, especially Andrew Tate can be the most like scumbag exploiting women, right? Like literally will brag about his webcam sex business and about having bitches and hoes and they can do women's shit again, disgusting. But both of these groups of people will go on all day about how if women are at all in their sexual power, they are unfulfilled. They're unhappy. That's not their role. They don't have self-respect, what have you. So again, why is it about this? Why it's about you. It's about you. Why again, why do you have to make women less than and feel better? Yeah, it's really and that's one thing that I, I I really struggle with. I don't I I don't like submissive. I mean, not not that I don't like them, but like I don't I'm not attracted to submissive women often. Right. Like it's just not really that's not my thing. I think that's what a lot of guys, especially in the conservative world, like really like. Kind of submissive, docile women. I like very assertive women. Like, and they'll be transparent. Like, Kelly makes most of the money around here, right? She's a bad bitch. She has way more earning potential than I do. Boom. And, I'm like, and that's fine. <laughs> like, it, it's, you know, and there's different things that I do that add value to our family. And, but like, the, the things that I'm able to do is because of her. Like, she's added so much value to my life. And, when I had, and this is where I think Ben and them are on onto something like having a family does change things tremendously. Sure. Like you got to grow the fuck up a little bit. And I stayed like, and I, I can call myself out for like staying kind of childlike for, you know, too long, probably, you know, traveling around doing these things. But it's like, I, I think I needed that because I didn't have that as a kid. And I kind of prolonged that like Peter Pan phase for sure. a while. But even then it's like, so, but that's, that's again, that's awareness of that in myself and be like, okay, like that's a lesson accept it, take responsibility for it, move on, keep going, you know, grow the fuck up a little bit, but don't grow up too much. Right. Like there's lessons of Peter Pan. And there's lessons of hook. I always love that. I, lo I love those two movies together because like you have the Peter Pan thing where it's like, Hey man, it's okay to grow up. You're not going to lose everything. Like there's beauty in that too. And then you have hook, which the Robin Williams movie where it's like, Hey, when you're an adult, like it's okay to be a kid. Sometimes it's okay to play and have fun. Like there's that balance of those two things. And I think there's really, this is a very Jordan Peterson esque like archetypes and, and narrative structure, but you look at that and it's like, you have to find that balance, but it takes so awareness looking into yourself, figuring that out. And when I see guys that, you know, are wearing loafers and driving Ferraris, like, I'm just like, I don't look at that guy and go like, that's the man. That's the fucking guy. And, and <laughs> right. there's somebody who's like, especially like, and listen, I'll call, I'll call women bitches and hoes sometimes with my wife, just like joking around. I don't ever mean that like earnestly, right? It's like, and, and my right. wife and I tend to invite other women into our relationship sometimes. And I'll be like, you know, she's like, where are you going? I'm like, oh, I'm going to go to Whole Foods and like troll for bitches. Like, it's like, it's, it's a joke. Right, right, we're, right. We're right, fucking right. Around. Sure. I would never be, but it's not like, I'm not ever going to say I have a pimp and hose degree, right? It's like, I never say that in like, really mean it. You know what I mean? It's like a joke, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a goofy fun thing. It's not ever meant to be serious. And I think that's where I mean, I call stuff gay. I'll say retarded. Like, I don't, I don't, I'm like kind of, I'm a little bit more crass in that way. I am too. That being said, it's like, if somebody ever called somebody with learning disabilities, a retard around me, they sure. might a hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a different conversation. It's a different, there's a, there's a line there. And it's like, I've kind of gotten to where I'm like, politically incorrect you know what I mean? a little bit crass yeah. more so the more pressure there was to not say these things the more i kind of was like i'm gonna do it anyways like watch me um but when you see somebody doing that and like thinking that women only have this role or men only have this role it's so reductionist and it doesn't so really true. fit people but then again acting like archetypes and like trends don't exist is also equally as delusional and that's again we have so the extremes true making all the creating all the content making all the opinions getting the audiences when neither one both are right and both are wrong right and just like i said andrew andrew tate's like analysis of what's going on is 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 correct oftentimes he's leveraging that because he's smart he's a smart guy he's leveraging that finance for financial gain right in the same way that certain people in the political realm want you to hate liberals like there's no one who has benefited more from crazy blue-haired liberals right and the trans agenda and all that there's no one who has benefited more than the people at the daily wire the daily oh, wire literally oh, no they're laughing their way to the bank laughing their way dude they want this to keep going <laughs> forever 
So like true. And so much fucking money, right? So when you think so about true. that, they love capitalism, right? Within capitalism, incentives drive markets, right? They're incentivized for that to keep going forever. Without that, they don't Where's make money. Their Where's, Where's their content? Where's their content? Well, the they ain't Shapiro bad. Like a 43 long, 43 minute long review of Barbie, right? Okay, I will say, I actually did watch the whole thing. Mine, my, I did a 39 minute review. Mine is better, everybody. But you, do that, though. you are a Barbie. <laughs> I have the authority. That's what I said in the episode. It's like you have all these fools. You even have KFC Barstool. You have all these. Fools. You know, the real Barbie is going to tell it straight and, and give it 100. Okay. But, but I have my whole thoughts about that movie. I will say, I actually, even though Ben Shapiro's like stick up his butt, whatever, like literally, you need to go light a Barbie on fire. Like, you're That's, cool. I, ha- childish, yeah. I no, but I have to say there actually were parts in it that I laughed and I was like, oh my God, Ben Shapiro has a sense of humor. Who knew? Like he makes fun of like, my viewers know who listen, but I hate how they make Barbie. It's actually plays into this episode, right? Because instead of, you know, amping up and elevating the power of like a hot Barbie, who's also president and a nobel winner and all these things they have to reduce her in the end into a granola basic bitch birkenstock wearing gynecologist going barbie and i was so mad it's like we get it they're trying to like make it the everyday feminist woman is the hero but it's like no i want to see wonder woman slaying kicking ass right but all that goes to say um yeah the end just really was the biggest buzzkill boner killer for me hated despised but yes I am the Barbie authority figure Ben Shapiro but I will say he did actually make me laugh a couple times in his review when he was making fun of like the lesbian Birkenstock (laughs) promo pushing like what's happening but do you watch the critical drinker at all Mm -mm. so he's a movie movie reviewer if you get into his videos he's so I think I've disagreed with him like one time in a video he's so good at this and he's really fun. He was actually on Russell Brand's show the other day. He needs oh, to be okay. on for three hours. I want him, I want him on Rogan really bad. He's so he's got like almost two million YouTube subscribers, and I've been watching him for years. Wow. And he did a review of Barbie, but his are like twelve minutes. Like man, the furthest one of his will go, but they're really funny. He's he's really good. Um, and he talks about it, and it's like, listen, what it seemed like the plot plot was. I haven't seen Barbie, but I I can uh, surmise from what I've seen that it was very similar to the plot of Enchanted which was actually a really good movie. Did you ever see Enchanted? I haven't seen it, no. Okay, so it's really it's really interesting. It's like, it's a princess, grows up in like cartoon Disney princess land. And then some, and then the, the Wicked Witch. human, Amy Adams. In, push it, yeah, Amy Adams gets pushed into a, like a portal, basically. It ends up in the world with a guy who's from Grey's Anatomy, the McDreamy guy. What's his name? Uh, there, Well, I didn't watch Grey's. Yeah, I know, the pop culture girl. I'm like, haven't watched Enchanted, haven't watched Grey's. But uh, what the heck is his name? I can see him. Oh Christ! He was in Sweet Home Alabama. Yeah, you know the guy. You Whatever. Know. Yeah, you got you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I Patrick Dempsey. Patrick Dempsey. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Uh. So, anyways, and she meets him, and she's like, you know, and then there's there's like a prince that comes through. It's a whole thing, but it's like the yeah. whole kind of moral of the story is like, yeah, like the whole cartoon fairyland world isn't all it's cracked up to be, and and the real world isn't all bad. And it seemed like the real world in Barbie was built firmly through the patriarchy, and that's it. Like that was the number one premise of the, what the real world was in the Barbie movie. And that it was, it was one of those things where there was nuance in that. And it was really interesting. And she ended up staying in Enchanted. She ends up staying in the real world. And it's a whole, it's really, it's a really cool, it's a fun movie. It's a, mm-hmm. And I feel like it was, it was an opportunity to do something like that with Barbie. Like it's, since the premise is so similar. Yeah, it definitely. Like show that there's like, there's nuance to it, right? Like there were yeah. definitely people in the real world that were assholes. There was also like singing and dancing numbers and really kind of sure. Like, oh, shit. Sure. And it, was, it was, it was both, you know, it was like, it was, it was, it was nuanced and it was really, it was a fun, enjoyable movie that I would like, I would love for my daughter to watch that movie. I can't, what I've seen at Bar- with Barbie, I'm like, I don't really think I want Agreed women to be on- to Barbies. Agreed. And even when the, the criticism that like Ken was kind of like a nobody, and the men, the Kens and the Barbie thing. I'm like, but that's also kind of how Barbie is. Like Barbie is Barbie. Totally. And they, like a side piece. So him being like yep. a, you don't, you don't expect the, the Kens in the Barbie universe to be like major actors in what's going on. Cause it's the Barbie universe and Ken is just whatever. And so and that was where criticism felt weird, but like, yeah. Yeah. The whole thing, right. is supposed to be satire. It's just Greta Gerwig being like really though, too proud of herself and like going too hard. I say this, it's like, the point that could have been made like in an enchant enchanted could have been done so much more 
effectively. And I didn't take, I took it with a grain of salt, right? Again, she's trying to do satire. I didn't take it as seriously as the Ben Shapiro's who are like, the men are emasculated. It's like, I'm in on the joke. I get it. Like the Ken's are props. They're not really saying men in real life are all these, you know, idiot airheads who go surfing and who are emasculated. Like, it's not that serious. I actually appreciated that part of it. I'm like, I get it. It's a fun little twist yeah. and spin on it. But what I will say is yes. Like, and this is where I want to get your, your take on this too, right? Because now you have you know, forget the Ben Shapiro's and this and that. You have Elon Musk weighing in on this shit, okay? Which, you know, Elon can't help himself. I'm here for it, for him. But yes, the movie really goes so hard on the patriarchy thing. And to the point where it sucks the fun out of it. And when you say like, would I want my daughter to watch this? I thought the same thing. It's like, I would rather have my daughters watch the Spice Girls, like, girl power, a force of nature. Don't fuck with me. Like always in control. Right. But still really playing up that feminine beauty and owning that feminine power or illegally blonde. We see Elle Woods in her Barbie form schooling their ass and winning the day. Yeah. And what this does is again, it just goes too hard and it sucks the fun out of it. And I feel like inadvertently, it just has a it doesn't have this inspiring, uplifting ending. It's like this grim, bleak reality of like the patriarchy is always ahead and you could you can try to get in there. But go I was just like, well, this shatters my hopes and dreams. Like, fuck me for trying. So with that being said, Connor, obviously, you know, and it ties into the beginning of this, right? We've seen it forever with the mainstream and pop culture and Hollywood going really hard on toxic masculinity and the patriarchy. And I am not ignorant to the history of the patriarchy and the structures that have been in place, right? But with that being said, again, even even Elon Musk today, he chimes in being like, you know, again, with the patriarchy over and over in this movie, we get it. You know, what is your take on it when it comes to pop culture and how they've been railing this home for years on the whole? 